Welcome everyone to a, a new series, uh, Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, so yeah, after I finish 2, um, I kind of went on vacation and then I, I'm going to try to get this done. Um, I haven't played Dark Souls 3 for probably a couple years, so I still have to get familiar with the uh, timings and mechanics. Uh, but we're just gonna kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. Um, and I haven't done a lore through with it in a long time. Like, I haven't, um, I know the story pretty well, but I think that I learned the stories of 1 and 2 a lot stronger. And I think comparing the lore of Dark Souls 3 to 1 and 2 will be the unique experience for me. So I'll probably be making a number of connections. But anyway, let's just jump right in and get into the cutscenes and go uh, start the series. Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric. Where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. Venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. The fire fades, and the lords go without thrones. Saint of the Deep. Farron's undead legion, the Abyss Watchers. Lord of the profaned capital. Yon the giant. Only in truth, the Lords will abandon their thrones. And the unkindled will rise. Nameless, accursed, undead. Unfit even to be cinder. And so it is that Ash seeketh embers. So, yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot to talk about with that. Um, you know, we'll talk as we get through the series as usual, but I just want to point out a few things about that. First, they said all the lands converge um, at the beginning there, and the, there was a kind of city in the background. I think a lot of people think that that's um, an Orlando, but it actually more closely uh, looks like a Drang Lake to me, which I think is interesting. 
we saw all those pilgrims with the kind of turtle backs going to some location. Um, and we kind of learn about ash and cinder and and embers and whatnot. Uh, this kind of plays off of Dark Souls 2's lore that this has happened many times before. It continues to happen, and we're now at this point where, at least for the base kind of game, we kind of forget about humanity and and hollowness or undead or like <clears throat> the difference between being fully human and being like what they call hollowed uh, in the community, but like obviously not fully hollow. But that kind of zombie look versus the clean human look we don't really have that we have like embered and non-embered non we, we are called ash um because now we're just i think we've either forgotten about that concept or we're just talking about the idea that there's all these people that have linked the flame since gwen you know what i mean we we saw three of them uh in the in the cut scene um but you know we are now ash seeking embers in other words we are trying to be the next because the bell's tolling because we're getting to the age of dark again why is that in the other um stories there's kind of reasons for that like er it was like the natural progression and, and no one yet had come to complete in this story we actually have um you know the way of the world is being usurped a little bit um and we'll talk about that when we get there but um, so this bell tolls and we kind of become awakened, <laughs> awakened and we might be the one that links the flame for this age is, I think, the idea. The other thing, the last thing, is that we saw a firekeeper kind of have the firekeeper eyepiece, which I don't think appears in other games. I can't even remember, but I mean, it's pretty common in this game the firekeeper has the eye uh blindfold essentially it looks like a crown and it looked like it had a kind of a spinning galaxy inside it looked like she was doing a ritual thing so my opinion on that is that she heard the bell as well and kind of was appointed firekeeper uh for us um and there are many of those that have happened that have sprung up over the years. Again, we'll talk about that later, but I wanted to specifically point out that that happened. Anyway, uh, for now, let us just, uh, let's get all this stuff going and just jump right in. Um, I'm good with all this stuff. I'm going to take the Sovereignless Soul so I can just do some leveling up. Uh, everything else we get in the game, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm fine with the basic look so yeah there's this kind of graveyard where all the kind of hollows have gone to die or that they've been put there, dragged there, as we saw in the cutscene. But, um, because we were deemed to be unfit to even be Cinder. But yet the bell tolls, and one of us, um, kind of awakens. Here's our grave. Um,. We'll kind of revisit this place a little bit later both in lore and in uh, physical presence. But let's read some of our stuff right off the bat here. So there's this flask, the undead treasure, these uh, dull green flasks filled with Estes at bonfires. The journey of an undead has always traced the bon has always traced the bonfires and no journey of import has been made without an Estes flask. Dark sign. The dark sign is the sign of an accursed undead. The dark sign returns its bearer to the last bonfire rested at, or the bonfire at Firelink Shrine, but at the cost of all souls held. Carriers of the dark sign are reborn after death and eventually lose their minds, turning hollow, and so it is they are driven from their homelands. Um, a lot of that's very um, 
similar, but the only thing I would say is that the dark sign is the sign of an accursed undead, as if there are some that are not accursed. Um, and this is just a soul. This is the soul of a nameless soldier in this case. All the souls are the same, I think, so we'll just read this one. Soul found on the corpse of a nameless soldier. Let the firekeeper transform this sovereignless soul into a source of strength, for to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. And we have the black separation crystal, a charm of farewell granted to banished undead. To banished undead. The crystal sends phantoms back to their homes, or you back to yours. Beware of fickle use of this item if you intend to nurture relations. Again, not much more there. But then we have a new thing, a way of white circlet. Restore the connection to other worlds. Those who engage in unjust deeds when in contact with other worlds will lose their connection to them. We have white circlets assume such sin as their own, but are found few and far between. Acting without honor will never be without risk. Um, you know, it's a mechanic uh, item. Uh, not a lot of um, lore there. Oops. Uh, so we're using a long sword at this point. A balanced, widely used standard straight sword inflicts damage, reliable standard damage as well as high thrust. And then we have skills, which we'll kind of explore uh, later. While in stance, use normal attack to break a foe's guard from below, and strong attack to slash upwards with a forward lunge. So we have the knight shield, orthodox shield of the kind commonly used by low-ranking knights. Medium shields are the most average of shields, providing a practical balance of damage, absorption, stability, and weight. And you can parry with these. Helm of a lowly knight, fashioned from solid iron. This iron helm might be the, on the heftier side, but compared to others of its ilk, but it, as such offers great physical absorption in exchange for its imposing weight. Do not think to wear it without the necessary vitality. Okay, and that's all we have for now. Uh, so yeah, the there's this new thing where if you dual wield and then get into a pose, you can uh, do like that's a special skill. That's another one, and they both use my uh, my meter in uh, in the middle. I have my health on top, my magic and skills in the middle, and then my stamina on the bottom. I assume most people know how to play this game, but I'm just mentioning it just in case. So we get a new item here, the Ashen Estus Flask. And that is um, quite befitting of an unkindled, an es Ashen Estus Flask turns a bonfire's heat cold. So it's just a cold version of this, which I guess is warm. Uh, and it restores your FP, um, which, I mean, at least for now, we're not going to need, so... Then over here is a uh, kind of a new enemy, categorically, um, in a sense. This is an optional fight, but I mean. I think we'll try to. As I say, I'm pretty green at this at this point. I'm trying to I haven't played these guys in a long time.
There's a new status effect in this uh, game. I wonder if he gives you that or if that's just... Oops. Greed. Alright. And from those, you get Titanite Scale. Titanite altered by a soul. Reinforces soul transpose weapons to plus four. Weapons forged by soul transposition can only be reinforced by titanite of the same kind. In rare cases, crystal lizards devour souls, growing to monstrous proportion and leaving these great scales. So, yeah, I mean, these are obviously the, uh, I think it's supposed to be the demon titanite, you know, that was what we repair, you know, kind of trans reinforced soul transpose weapons with. Um, it also kind of looks like the Demon Titanite like um, face with the runes on it and such. So yeah. Anyway. It's it's explaining that those that thing we just fought was a regular crystal lizard but that it kind of acquired a special soul and then grew to be you know, an immense size or whatever. Again, that supports my theory that, um, you know, souls affect the size of things. For more on that, you can watch my other videos. I won't go into that too much here. Um... But yeah, anyway, um, let's try to get here to the first boss. We see this kind of area over here. And uh, up this way we see uh, kind of where we came from, uh, which is Lothric, as we heard in the cutscene. Rest, which is now an emote, which is kind of cool actually. Parrying is a lot harder for me in this game. In fact, the the fact that I got that was uh, <laughs> a coincidence, I think. Um, I think there's an item down here. Yeah, I guess I'll grab it. Oops. What is it? Fire bombs. Oops. Oh, I got a regular Titanite shard. We might as well read that. Titanite shards are fragments of the legendary slabs. Titanite is etched into weapons to reinforce. Biscarn filled with black powder. Uh, fire damage, which differs from physical damage, is highly effective against creatures of flesh, beasts, and other foes that might naturally have cause to fear the flame. Seems like a little nod to Bloodborne there. Okay. Alright, well, let's go look at this first boss here. Kind of trying to get through this quickly because we have a lot of stuff to do uh, at the first area. Um, first of all, there's this huge tree with a huge coffin underneath it, and then a bunch of gravestones um, beside that. And then down here, the actual world. But in here, we have this guy with a sword stuck in his chest with this weird stuff on his back. So, I guess the only thing to do is remove the sword. Used to be really good at pairing this guy. 
that one in particular. What I like is that his his left side is the way to is what side you should stay on for the beginning of the fight. But for the second part of the fight it's the opposite. Anyway, he's not much of a... He's a little bit of a pushover. I mean, obviously, <laughs> for for those that have played it, you know, before, it's kind of hard. But yeah, you can see I have an Ember restored. My health is now bigger than it was. And I got um, a Coiled Sword. Sword missing from the Shrine Bonfire. The Shrine. Okay. Thrust into the Shrine Bonfire to restore its power and enable travel between bonfires. This sword is only bequeathed to Chosen Ash, as judged by the Eudix, who awaits the arrival of Ash as a scabbard. So this is similar, I think, to the Asylum Demon, where, like, whoever can defeat him and get the sword is worthy of, you know, being chosen. Um, and Eudix means uh, judge, I think, in Hebrew or something. That's what I've heard, I don't know. Or Latin, maybe. It's interesting, these doors are quite large to accommodate someone much larger than me. Broken straight sword. Straight sword with the broken blade. A weapon with no exceptional qualities. Only a mad hollow would choose to fight with this. And it's a straight sword, so it is the same attack. Uh, same. Oops. Probably gonna do a lot of strafing in the beginning here. Always need a homeward bone. Bone fragment reduced to white ash. Return to the last bonfire used for resting, or to the shrine bonfire. Bonfires are sustained by bones of the undead. In rare cases, their previous owner's strong urge to seek bonfires enchants their bones with a homeward instinct. Which is, um... It's pretty much exactly what the description was in the first game. Um, yeah, there's a couple of things that we can do here in this area that I'm not going to do, um, just because we're going to wait until a little bit later. Oops. Okay. Let me get our first ember. No one kindled can ever truly claim the embers that burn within a champion's bosom, which is precisely what makes their yearning for warmth so keen. With the strength of fire, the summoning signs of unkindled become visible, and seekers of embers can be summoned to join in cooperation, but beware the ember might also attract invaders. So functionally it's very similar to being human, although in a certain sense, they also made it very similar to an effigy. Um, I 
there's a guy up here, which, um, as I say, we're not going to fight standing up there. Um, there's no need to fight him right now. I'm not going to use a, a, a Nucci build like I did in the first game. Um, I think this is another homeward. Okay. So, um, we got another ember, but we got the east-west shield, a wooden shield decorated with the ancient symbol of a two-headed eagle, uh, close to a small shield in size. Wooden shields are light, manageable, and offer relatively high magic absorption. And we know that because that that's because, for the most part, wooden shields are all based off of the descendants of the great arch trees. So, yeah, here we are at Firelink Shrine. Now, before, you know, I, I, I don't know that this is necessarily the Firelink Shrine from the first game. I think this is a Firelink Shrine. I think that there are people that have linked the fire here. So... In fact, there's only five um, thrones, so this would have only been used for five ages. It's just my interpretation. Uh, we have a random giant here growing a uh, a tree. Uh, I'm not sure why this is here, but you can get a a, a seed of a giant tree here. Um, yeah, and so this is an area, we'll be able to uh, get to this later, um, and unlock uh, that, but uh, for now, I am going to, uh, looks like it might be, uh, there might be a dark sign on the back of that giant. I wonder if that was there in Dark Souls 2 ever. Um, before I go talk to everyone, I'm going to go get some items up here, so... There's a little uh, skip here. Uh, I don't know if this is intentional. It seems very like, I mean, it's hard to achieve, but like, um, I don't know. It just seems like they might have wanted you to do that. Tons more homeward bones. And we can get in up onto the rafters here. Just wanted to get some of this stuff. So this is the crows. Uh, we're gonna leave a homeward bone. Um, so we get call over for that, and we get the iron bracelets. Um, call over is uh, a fun emote. Um, but. Um, the iron bracelets are Solaire's bracelets. Durable iron bracelets protecting the wearer's wrists. Said to be the bracelets of a knight of sunlight from a previous age. Has no particular powers, but are of fine quality and evidently well taken care of. Which is pr pretty much what they said in the first game. And there's tons of hidden walls around in this game. Then we get the covetous silver serpent ring. A silver ring depicting a snake that could have been, but never was, a dragon. Fallen foes, ye foes yield more souls. Snakes are known as creatures of great avarice, devouring prey even larger than themselves, but swallowing them whole. If one shackles, uh, if one's shackles are cause for discontent, perhaps it is time for some old-fashioned greed. So, so yeah, we see these uh, um, five um, kind of thrones here, and they all have different qualities about them. Like this one is very large. Um, this one has a bunch of swords, but on it and such. 
Um, so, but there's an engraving on the back of each one. Yorm the giant of the profane capital. So that's his throne. And we learned about him in the cutscene. The watchers of the abyss. Also looks like they have like kind of like animal skin on the, as a runner. But we heard about these guys. And we have this, which sits above them all, which says, Holy King Lothric, last hope of his line. Well, we know Lothric is the name of the, uh, of the city, or the castle, or whatever. Uh, but we did not see him in the cutscene as a Lord of Cinder. Ludlith the Exiled. And this is unique in the sense that the guy is already sitting on his throne. So he was not all he was also not mentioned in the cutscene, but he's also just here. And Saint Aldrich of the Deep, which was also mentioned. And this looks like it's got a like a red covering to it. So yeah. I mean, we'll learn more about these, I guess, but uh, for now, let's talk to this firekeeper who is, um, you know, wearing this thing that covers her eyes, as we saw her put on in the beginning. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I am a firekeeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones, and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. So yeah, everything she said indicates that she's one of many fire keepers, and that she's here for us. She's also given us our quest, that we are to collect all these uh, people, or these lords, and deliver them back to their thrones. So that's our first quest. Ashen one, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen one, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. Ashen one, I okay. Farewell, Ashen one. May the flames guide thee. So anyway, we're gonna put the uh, the coiled sword into the bonfire and create a bonfire here at the shrine. And uh, there used there was gonna be a mechanic here where you could create bonfires dynamically, like you could put them anywhere in the world. Um, but I think they abandoned that, which is probably for the best. Like they probably there's probably some weird like exploits or mechanics, or it just it probably wasn't that fun. So. But um, they showed trailers or previews with that. This is our crestfallen guy. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Another one. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. Gives me conniptions. And they'd have us seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we're talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. He's appropriately crestfallen, but he brings up a good point. I mean, I mean, I guess that's why we're talking about the Chosen Ash, but he's saying, like, all these people, not just one, but all of these uh all five of these have linked the fire and like you know how are we going to deliver five of them i mean that's that's an immense task don't you think <laughs> what a sick joke asking us to seek the lords of cinder we're talking truth uh -huh. Alright. 
Well, he's given up. You can attach um, emotes to um, to messages now, which is cool. Uh, and there's a blacksmith here, which is, you know, I think they, you know, wanted to uh, do this in other games. I guess they did it in one, but I just like it where we have one blacksmith here and uh, just everything you need at your own base. And of course it's Andre. I kind of was delaying that um, for those who might not have seen it, but Andre of Astora here in... Uh, Firelink. Looks like he has some sort of some skin disease. I thought it was maybe a, a dark sign, but Well, a newcomer I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. Mm -hmm. A toilsome journey, I wager. You require good arms. Let me smith you weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. So yeah, he can do a bunch of stuff. Um, and he he doesn't have a lot of good lore, but we'll probably talk to him. He he will eventually, but not um, not in this kind of initial talk. But he can re reinforce your weapon, of course. Um, you can infuse your weapon with different, you can make it like refined, raw, sharp, you know, you can do all these things. Repair equipment. And the equipment works exactly the same as Dark Souls 2. It, dur it run ruins its durability between bonfires and then you it repairs the bonfires, but if it's broken completely, you can bring it to him. You can allot Estus, so we can do that and he can also uh, reinforce their Estus West so we can give him our um, shard and then oh I should have read that shouldn't I have we'll get more uh, remind me next time um, but now we have five weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large but when overused they'll eventually break when their durability is low, repair becomes a necessity. Use a powder, or simply rest at a bonfire. But should chance impel them break, bring them me. I'll hammer them back into shape. They take no pleasure in breaking, I assure ye. So handle them with care, if you would. I think for the basic stuff, this game is probably the best for letting you know what's going on, how to do it. There are two ways to smith weapons. Simple reinforcement is one, and infusion the other. Reinforcement is straightforward. It strengthens a weapon without altering its property. Infusion is a more advanced form of smithing that infuses an element. Reinforcement requires titanite, and infusion requires gems. Bring the stones, and I'll do this. I guess we have some stones I can read. After all. In battle, your weapons are your only friends. Forge them well, and they won't let you down. He doesn't really have a forge. <laughs> ah, another matter. Infusing weapons with gems requires a special kind of coal. My humble coals won't be any use infusing more unusual gems. I know, it's an awful shame, but it's all I have. Oh, please don't give me that look. Believe it or not, I'm quite thin-skinned. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you find any Estus shards, bring them here. They can be used to reinforce either of your Estus flasks. Without those flasks, you'd want for life or focus. And they'll always stay with you. Why not treat them well? Huh? <laughs> he implies there's more than one flask, but I guess maybe he just means the Ashen Estus and the, and the regular Estus. I hope he means that. Because it does say reinforce Estus flask. 
Weapons and protection is the wind treatment you but okay. date, so that's everything. Pretty be careful, I don't <laughs> Alright. So um oops. Good. Um, we got plenty to level up with, uh, and then we have this uh, lady. We'll, we'll eventually, obviously, fill this whole area with people, but for now, these are the only people here. A pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> I also think it's a great idea to have a generalized store at your home base, plus a place that you can sell your items. Um, you know, like, I don't know, it just, it's very, like, nice to have. It just, like, makes everything easier to manage what you exactly want to do, um, rather than making those things you unlock or, like, things you have to travel to. She's also, it looks like she's wearing, uh, covering over her eyes. I don't know if that indicates that she once was a firekeeper. She does look like a firekeeper from Dark Souls 2. Um, it says she's a handmaid, and we do know there was a handmaid for those named Milibeth. Maybe this is Milibeth? I don't know. But uh, there's some other things with her we'll, uh, we'll learn. Uh, so... Ashen One. If my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbral ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on death? <laughs> so yeah, more mechanic stuff. Knowest thou of that soppy gossip? That cordial intrusion layeth the path to embers. And so thou art in need of a soapstone, ashen one. Then thy pockets will overflow with souls to trade to me. <laughs> ashen one, if my ring is it. Okay. And she's got a lot of stuff. And we're going to read it all. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, embers we read. Repair power. Lightly enchanted golden powder. Um, repairs equip weapons and armor as long as they haven't already been broken. Use of a weapon depletes its durability. As long as a weapon is not broken, its durability can be restored at a bonfire. But for distant journeys, one may wish to prepare ahead. We have the purple moss clump back again. Medicinal purple moss clump. Reduces poison buildup. Cures poison. Poison builds up in the body, and when it breaks out, it causes gradual damage over a period of time. Poison can be exasperating, so be sure to carry sufficient moss clumps when traveling to a blighted area. Prism stone, warm pebble emitting a blue, beautiful phasing aura of seven colors with a very rare eighth. Again. The prism stone does nothing special, but can serve as a path marker, or perhaps dropped off a cliff to judge height by the sound of its descent. If all the loud noise is heard upon its landing, then the fall from the ledge is surely lethal. Yeah, I mean, this is a lot similar, but more explicit than the first game. Then we have the uh, soapstone. Be summoned to another world as a phantom. 
through your sign and defeat that er the area boss to gain the strength of flame. The nature of Lothric is murky, unclear. The white sign soapstone allows unkindled to assist one another. Right off the bat, you can get the dried finger. Used to strengthen connection to other worlds, allowing the summoning of a third phantom, but a second dark spirit. Also makes the summoning of a dark spirit occur earlier. So again, just mechanics, not much lore. Tower key, key to the decrepit tower behind Firelink Shrine, which leads to the bell tower. The bell tower is the grave of firekeeper's past. When a firekeeper has served her purpose, she is led to true darkness, where she enjoys a long, deserved sleep. That sounds scary. Soul Arrow. We have a Farin Dart, variation of Soul Arrow, developed by sorcerers of the Undead Legion of Farin. Um... I don't know if it said that the Abyss Watchers were from Farron on that stone, but they are, so... Well known among the Farron sorceries, it is learned far and wide due to its ease of use. Heal Aid. A show of tolerance from the Way of White. To use miracles of Cobra Talisman, blah blah blah. So, that's Heal Excerpt or something. So even that kind of has changed. Small daggers lack power or reach, but can deal quick consecutive hits due to their lightweight. And then hit skill is quick step, which is really nice if you want to get around quickly. We have the short sword, small straight sword, excelling in thrusting attacks, uh, light and easily wielded. Similar uh, skill. We have the scimitar right off the bat. Small curved sword that excels in swift movements and consecutive attacks. The scimitar's flesh rending slash, slash attacks are greatly compromised against armor and tough scale covered hides. And you can do a spin slash with it. Halberd, long hilted weapon mixing spear and axe. It can be thrust like a spear or swept sideways like an axe, making it a versatile weapon. And you can charge with it. So we have a Sorcerer's Staff, a common catalyst given to sorcerers at the Vinheim Dragon School. And Steady Chant is the skill. So yeah, to me, like, this is kind of where I, I'm not really sure what's going on, but like, Vinheim was all on But Forgotten. I mean, in fact, it was called Dragon, Dragon Lake. Um, and so, along with a number of other things. So I don't know what is this is referring to. They did say there's a place where all the lands are converging and it might be around here and so this could be like parts of the past coming in now but I I don't know I just kind of feel like they're like screw what happened to Dark Souls 2 we'll just go back to Dark Souls 1 and have it make not a lot of sense um so talisman for casting miracles of the gods once a very common item amongst the ranks of the old way of white Equip a talisman or sacred chime to cast miracles. Now, I will say, you know, I know there's a couple of other lands that are talked about, but I don't know that all of them are. Like, for example, Thoroughland isn't mentioned here, which is where a lot of the talismans were used, but I don't know if that's meaningful or not. Um, a simple makeshift torch made from a holy rag. Torches such as these are the easiest way to illuminate one's surroundings, but their use comes at the cost of occupying a hand that would otherwise be free. It can be used as a rudimentary weapon to inflict fire damage. It possesses no skill, being an ordinary basic tool. It's cool that it's a you know a weapon now instead of like a status or I don't know what it was in Dark Souls 2. An orthodox round small shield covered with leather. Parry with that one. Standard round wooden shield. It's, it is daubed with red paint that symbolizes the blood of warriors. And it parries. Warriors round shield. Standard round wooden shield. It bears a double bladed axe, the mark of a warrior. And large leather shield. Orthodox round shield covered with leather. It's a medium shield, but you can still parry with it. This is what I used in Dark Souls 2 for a big chunk. We get the chain helm, which is similar with the undead merchant sold us in one, along with some of this other stuff. 
Chainmail helm of thin interlinking rings of steel, popular due to its ease of crafting, respectable damage absorption, and lightweight. Knights may favor imposing armor, but for warriors on the battlefield, that which keeps them alive is armor enough. And then we have some basic arrows. And bolts and stuff. Okay. She'll continue to get more things. Ashen one. Be sure to bring more soul. <laughs> uh, you know, as we get the um as we get the umber ashes and we bring them to her, um, obviously she'll get more. That's what she told us. Ashen one produced the coiled sword at the bonfire. I did that. The mark of ash will guide thee to the land of the lords, to Lothric, where the homes of the lords converge. Yeah, right there. So Lothric is the place where all the lands are converging. But again, like I don't know why Gwyn isn't up here, for example. If if the land of the previous lords are, I don't know. Ashen ones. Ah, very well. Then. Um, let me actually just double check something quick. DD. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna go do a, uh, a quality build. Um, let's see. Might go there. Just do that for the first one. You can hear her chanting in the background. I wonder if anyone, I'm sure someone has transcribed that, so it must not be super important because I probably would have heard about it. Farewell, Ashen One. May the flames guide thee. And we did not speak to Ludlith up here, so let's do that. So Ludlith is sitting on his throne, unlike everyone else. And he is also... I mean, he looks small in general, but it looks like he might not have legs. But I think he might be also small as well. Like, I have some theories about this game, and I'm going to kind of hint at them. We'll, we'll be getting to it over the long haul. Like, a lot of my theories won't come until the very, very end once we kind of get to the conclusion. But I just wanted to, I, you know, I, I believe some things that I haven't seen a lot of other people believe or talk about. So, Ludlith is definitely a character that I care about who he is and what's going on. So, all that unkindled and a seeker of lords. I am Ludlith of Corland. Look not in bewilderment as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my charmed corpse. This sad cadaver, no need to be coy. Have a closer look. So he speaks in the old tongue, and we talked about that in Dark Souls 1, that that means that he uh, is old. Um, he's not the only one that we've met so far that speaks in an old tongue, but I just want to point that out. He also said he linked the fire long ago, um, and I don't know if that, I mean, he obviously did it after Gwyn, but... Uh, you know who know who knows how long ago that was. That could have been before us in Dark Souls too. No style of our purpose. Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The fast fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is. 
I became a lord of Cinder. So he's probably one of the first to do I it here. More, but I will die a colossus. He indicates that he is small as well. So yeah, maybe there's the five that were to this shrine. Five ages, and maybe he was the first, or maybe he was the second. I don't you know, I don't know. I don't know the order of these, but um yeah, he's basically saying that we will reenact the very first linking in order to extend, because we're in trouble. As per usual in these games at this point. Knowest thou of our purpose? Five thrones will take five lords. And we need the five lords for kindling, yeah. The fast fading flame must be licked. Right. In reenactment, so it right. be. Okay. Treat the fire keeper not with discourtesy. She is much like thee. Prisoners both kept to link the fire. So we are a prisoner until we link, and she's a prisoner until we link or die. So anyway, that's Firelink Shrine of Dark Souls 3. Um, again, there's a lot to cover, uh, and we will get to everything throughout the game, but we're just gathering some information now. And actually, I'm going to travel here, although we won't play until next episode. Um, but I'm just going to be, like, doing the last bit of lore uh, once we arrive here. Um, oops. So yeah, High Wall of Lothric is our first thing, so we're going to go up on the, the wall where we were looking at. And here's our other ones. You can see the image of me resting on the left side of the uh, the name of the fire line, of the, the bonfire name. That's just where I last rested. Um, and they also sometimes, well, I guess maybe when we get into the game, they'll show you how many people are in that area, so you'll know if you want a PvP. It's kind of a new feature. That came in a patch, actually, but it's a nice feature. But anyway, let's go up to uh, the High Wall of Lothric. And if you don't know anything about this story, and you are kind of learning it through this playthrough... I definitely would encourage you to not read, you know, the the item descriptions that come up when we travel and stuff, just because in some cases they will be just straight up spoilers. So we get brought to this room. It actually looks very similar to like the asylum cell we found ourselves in, although there's some huge differences. One is that there is a lord vessel type thing and a coiled sword sitting here. Um, and a window that has been boarded up. We can also see these runners, which might be the uh, Lothric um, crest or you know something similar. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. I'm not sure. I'm just seeing myself. I guess it kind of looks like a shield or a heart with like tentacles coming off of it. I don't know. And then above that, is a quite an interesting statue, but it is what looks like a king, a bearded man with a crown with wings on his back. Wonder how that represents Lothric. The the castle, not the person. Although maybe the person. Lothric is actually right up there. Uh, it's kind of one of those cool things, you know. I mean, this basically, you can see most everywhere we're going to go in the game. From here, from that area, I'm not going to, you know, kind of give away um, to this area, down here, the bridge, that building. And this is the current level, and then obviously all of this we'll be doing at some point later. So I think it's kind of a cool little uh, feature of most of the games. You can also see, yeah, like that thing that's glowing right there is important in this level. 
And yeah, I think that will call it quits for this episode. Um, you know, we can see some interesting things here with these, but we'll talk about all of that stuff and everything interesting about the High Wall of Lothric in next episode. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, gameplay to come next episode. Bye.